And to me, there's no better de-ester than Waves Sibilance. Now, Waves Sibilance works in a very interesting way because it allows you to have two different types of detection, a much narrower or broader. It lets you monitor the S's, of course. But I love the way that the threshold and the range actually work in conjunction with the split. So you can actually have this uh, de-ester working in a much broader or more sur surgical way. So I'm gonna let you hear some of the areas that preoccupied me a bit more. Can't help but feel alive in a place where only the in a place where only the strong survive. Place strong survive. All this are gonna be extra emphasized due to all the processing we have added so far. So I'm using sibilance to kind of like take the sibilances, of course, a little bit down. Of course, this is before. In a place where only the strong survive, that's life. And this is after. In a place where only the strong survive, that's life. That's life. You hear how all of a sudden we have still retained the esters. Because now remember, if you abuse the esters, singers are going to sound like they're lisping. So we don't want this to happen. We want actual S's to be retained, but not melt them down, for the lack of better words. Now, the great thing about this is that it has a look-ahead detector, so it can detect a couple of milliseconds earlier where the S's are, and you have a monitor so that you can actually hear exactly what goes within the detector circuit of this plugin. And again, you can make the mode as wide or as in split mode, which is a bit more surgical to me. Lastly, I am finally applying a bit of color. So this is so far what we have achieved. Let's go ahead and bypass everything we had so far and listen from this point on. In a place where only the strong survive, that's life, that's life in the city. So far we have this sounding vocals. That's life, that's life in the city. And now, for me, it's a point where I want to add a bit more of coloration. And to me on vocals, I've started using heavily the tube channel strip, the magma tube channel strip. Because with only literally four knobs, I'm not using a lot of the compression at this point because I use a lot of compressors, compressors before, so I don't have the need of using extra compression. But these four knobs, the drive, highs, mids, and bass, allow me to craft the best sounding vocals. Now, in this specific instance, I love to add a bit of drive saturation to have the vocals to stick out too much and to kind of like hyper accentuate a bit more the hyper harmonic of the vocals. On this instance, I have actually uh, applied a high pass filter at 110 hertz. I give it a 2.8 dBs on the highs 5 dB actually a bit more at 4000 hertz and actually remove drastically a lot of bass. So this is the vocals without the magma tube and then it will engage it along with the performance. Can't help but feel alive in a place where only the strong survive. That's life, that's life in the city, in the city. So as you can hear, our vocals are now sounding way more closer to the finish line. Let's see what happens when we start placing this vocal the way it is right now in context with the song. Let me close the magma. 
and go ahead and open up only the instrument. Let me actually put this in preview for a minute. Now, of course, I have kind of like boosted the vocals to let you hear and compensate for the lack of volume. Of course, I know for a fact that these vocals are going to be featured with doubles, triples, harmonies, and a lot of other different tracks which are actually represented over here. But nevertheless, I still think we could add some parallel processing to add that finished touch of high-end vocals, vocals that actually you hear on records. And what I have over here are two parallel processing, one called Shine and the other one called Parallel Vocal. Now these two actually leads me to these two tracks over here. I'm gonna go ahead and actually mute everything else. On the first track, on the Shine vocals, I'm actually using, don't mind the very first plugin, it's a down mixer, so I made a stereo track becoming a mono. This is a stuck plugin from Pro Tools. We ain't covering this in this tutorial. Anyway, the first plugin that I use is this auto exciter called Aphex. Now the Aphex over here is actually followed by an R for EQ, and as you can see these two, are actually working in tandem, so that with the oral exciter, I'm actually enhancing a lot of the high end of the vocals, and with the EQ right after, this amazing RQ4, um, REQ4, I am carving out a lot of lows and actually giving almost 17 dB of boosting. Now, this is the effect with and without the parallel, let's just call it shine vocal. Let's get to the chorus, shall we? Alright, so what I'm going to be doing right now is unmuting the shine. On. In the city. You see how much we gain in terms of clarity of the vocals. I'm gonna play this in context with the music and I'm actually gonna increase the volume of it while we're listening to it just to give you a bit of an understanding of where we're going with this. So here they are. I'm using a control surface so you're not gonna see me doing a lot of things with my mouth, but mouse, but uh, nevertheless you're gonna see the fader increasing. Uh, before I do so, let's play safe. Let's put us track in preview. Of course, as you can hear, I am not hyper accentuating this because otherwise it would sound almost counterproductive to what we just did. But a little bit of this air in parallel just gives vocals a bit more air, so to speak, and that very high end feeling that we generally need in some production like pop in this case. The other plugin I'm actually using is, let me remove the latch, all right, is a parallel vocals. Same thing, I'm using a down mixer, um, but in parallel, I'm using this PukeTech 660. Now, the characteristic of this compressor is that other than having different time constant, and I use time constant too, because I had 
a fast enough release to keep up with the vocals, but it wouldn't be too much pumping and breathing. So in this case, it's a very slow compressor, but the quality of this compressor is that it brings up a lot of the bottom end and kind of like lower mid range of the vocals. This is the vocals without, and this and then I'm gonna play it with. I'm gonna choose an actual different section. Let's get on verse one. This is without this compressor. And I'm not bypassing it over here. I'm just muting the actual return of the track. With. Again, without. I'm just gonna go from the pre-chorus onward. So now I'm gonna let you hear this vocals with and without the parallel processing, which has to do with a parallel compressor and a parallel um, oral exciter. So, without. Always knew I can be the one, so ready to show what i become. My life, my life, yeah. Always knew I can be the one, so ready to show what i become. In a place where only the strong survive, that's life. And as you can see right now, we have a vocal. Now we have something that actually can stand the chance to cut through the mix and to be delivering a professional sounding texture to this incredible instrument. Now, another thing that we have to do is put things in perspective. What do I mean by that? Well, right now we have carved some space for the vocals to stick out. But as engineers, we need to try to enhance a bit more their sound, their feeling, their width, their depth. And how do we do this? Well, of course, with effects. 